You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your old buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticon. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at TFYLP. Do you ever feel lonely? Wish you were part of the bigger team? I've sure been feeling that way lately, so I've been eagerly awaiting the arrival of my two best pals, Thundercracker and Skywarp, or as I lovingly refer to them, Big Blue and Purple Rain. These two knuckleheads and I, Mr. Starscream, have been palling around for over three decades, so to see them again in full plastic glory just brought a tear to my optics. Yes, after our time during the Siege of Cybertron, it was unclear if we'd ever meet again. Skywarp got a job at Amazon making tons of dough, and Thundercracker faded into obscurity. Last I heard, he was having trouble holding down various shelf-warming gigs across the country. But just today, everything changed, as I discovered they'd both been making appearances at Target stores in the USA. So I jumped into the air as high as I could and sped off to greet them. The reunion was so glorious that I decided it was time to share just how best to reunite with your fellow Seekers as well. So this entire episode will be an on-the-shelf deep dive in how to easily snag these highly sought-after Earthrise toys. These methods can apply to almost any item at Target, but follow my treacherous lead at your own peril. You better take notes, because I'm not doing this twice. Or I guess you could just rewind and give this episode another listen, couldn't you? On the shelf. As of Sunday, June 14th, 2020, the Earthrise Seeker 2-pack of Skywarp and Thundercracker is hitting Target stores across the country. I know you all cringe every time there is a new Target exclusive revealed, so I, Professor Mr. Starscream, am here to teach you a special lesson called Toy Hunting 101 Target Edition. First off, a little housekeeping. There are over 1,800 Target stores across North America. Target has always had exclusive toy products, but with the death of Toys R Us, they have stepped up to fill in the void and have been stocking more and more specialty product from companies like NECA, Bandai, and yes, big guys like Hasbro. Target has always been very Transformers friendly, and with War for Cybertron, they have gone big with items like last year's Siege Rainmaker 3-pack, the Cybertronian Villains Cyberverse exclusive sets, and the upcoming movie Masterpiece toys, which are likely to be their most expensive Transformers exclusives to date. There's also, count them, two Earthrise exclusive gift sets revealed so far for 2020, and they are releasing imminently. So imminently, in fact, that the Thundercracker and Skywarp sets are currently en route to most stores, and actually in many stock rooms right, right now. now. But Mr. Starscream, my target doesn't have any Skywarp or Thundercrackers. What gives? Great question, and that's the meat and potatoes for this entire episode. I myself was able to acquire this set this very morning, but it takes some work and some savvy planning on the part of any would-be collectors. Toy hunting can be a super frustrating process, but if you follow my 12-step plan, I'll set you up for success using the internet, a variety of free technology-driven tools, persistence, good timing, a little energon, and a lot of luck. Step one. To get started, you really ought to have a Target.com account. I know most of you probably already have this, but if you don't, what are you thinking, dummy? A Target.com account allows you to track your orders, easily sign up for in-stock notifications, and lets you assign a local store as your home base. Step two. If you have a smartphone, and you really should if you want to streamline the toy hunt in the modern world, you should download the Target app and make sure your account is connected. Again, this is no-brainer stuff. I find that the app is a lot easier to use than trying to load up the website, but it's your rodeo. You can ride whichever horse is easier to tame. Step 3. 
Sign up for a Target Red Card. This isn't a requirement, but if you like saving at least 5% off the retail price of anything you purchase, uh, this is a must have. Whenever you use your red card in store or online to pay for a purchase, you will save 5% off the order total, which then decreases your tax burden as well. Extra points if you attach your red card to your Target.com app wallet for ease of use and maximum damage. Total Carnage! I love it! If you've checked off all three of the first steps, congratulations! You are already light years ahead of most everyone else that is trying to get a hold of a Target exclusive toy. Now comes the fun part, I mean, hard work. Step four. Find out all the intel of your prey. This includes the planned release date, price, UPC, and or DPCI. Typically this information is out there via corporate press releases on news sites like TFW2005, Sabertron.com, Allspark, or T-Formers. For the big game of this exercise, I present the details of the Seeker 2-pack. Back in April of 2020, press releases went out with photos of the Target exclusives along with price and release details. The Seekers were set for ride release on July 3rd at a price of $59.99. The UPC was not included in this press release. Keep in mind that these details are always tentative and things do change, especially release dates. In this particular case, although the release date is still officially July 3rd, stores in certain parts of the country are getting them early. Although exclusives do tend to arrive in store warehouses before the release date, arriving almost a whole month early is exceptional. Good for you! Step 5 Find and bookmark the online listing, if it's available. Large companies typically do not have all their processes in sync 100% of the time. In-store versus online sales cycles are difficult to keep copacetic, and typically listings are perfected and launched well before an item is available to add to your cart. In the case of the Skywarp Thundercracker set, the listings went live sometime last month, and this is typically newsworthy, so you can usually rely on the news site of your choice to alert you when these listings are found. Sometimes the listings are made to be unsearchable prior to launch, but scrappy young trans fans are still able to find them. Again, it's best to bookmark these pages in some fashion so they are easily accessible. Even if you don't plan to buy them online, repeated easy access to these listings are crucial to efficient toy hunting. Step six. Remember earlier I told you about the DPCI? This abbreviation stands for Department Class Item and is the linchpin for how Target manages their inventory and operates as an organization. This identifier is different from the UPC, or Universal Product Code, commonly referred to as the barcode. Each individual product has a UPC, but many items across a specific category or size class or wave may share the same DPCI. For instance, all Warfare Cybertron Siege, Earthrise, and tentatively the third chapter of the WFC story within the same size class share the same DPCI. These are the identifying numbers written on your receipt. This is why if you buy two different deluxe characters on the same receipt, both will be recorded as the same DPCI. However, a Deluxe from Studio Series will have its own DPCI. This system is always changing, but I'm explaining how it worked for the past few years and as of 2020. Time to write this down. The DPCI for the Earthrise Seeker 2-pack is 0871621193. If you must know, 087 refers to the department, toys. 16 refers to the War for Cybertron toy line, and 2193 is the actual item. This is the single most important piece of information you have in your arsenal to go to war. And to war, we are headed. Woohoo! Now you are fully prepared to go into battle, so follow me! Decepticons Step 7. You can always wait for news to hit the site of your choice about an in-store discovery of your item, but why rely on others? It takes a lot of luck to be the first to discover a new item on shelf or in-store, but you can increase your odds by periodically checking the parked listing for your item. Going forward, I am going under the assumption that you have the Target app installed, operating, and are signed in with an account. Hopefully based on your location services, the nearest store is set as your home store. If not, you can change it in your settings. 
On the listing of the item, the top of the screen should say your home, store, and whether that item is in stock. For pre-release products, most of the time it will say out of stock in red. But then near the bottom of the app, you should see your home store's name with a link to change store. Hit that link and a new modal with other nearby stores should appear. This list is sorted by distance to your default location, but you can enter other zip codes or cities and states. There is a product status for each store beneath its distance from your location. These statuses include in stock, limited quantity, out of stock, and not sold in this store. And the aptly named Sir Not Appearing in this film. During the early days of a new product's release cycle, these statuses are very important to help you find your treasures. Before an item has seen widespread release, most statuses will say not sold in this store. This is a temporary status that you should consider to really mean not yet in stock. Once the item has arrived from trucks and scanned into the store's inventory, the status will change to green text that says in stock or yellow text saying limited quantity. This means the product is at the store. We got I must stress that just because your app is saying a store has stock, it's not a guarantee they will be there. The items may have been sold or might not be seen on the shelf. The statuses you see on your app are not real-time numbers, but mere estimates that are refreshed and updated a handful of times per day. More on this detail later. If the status is red and says out of stock, this means the inventory has most likely been purchased and you missed it. So the product was there, but now it's gone, unless the store receives more stock at a later date. Although this can be a real letdown, the silver lining is that if one store stays out of stock but the rest say not sold in this store, the chances are very good that stock will be showing up shortly at the other stores. You just have to be ready to strike. Break me down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Eight. The Target app is not your only weapon in the war against exclusives. There are a variety of free tools out there that have API access to data points at major retailers like Target and Walmart, and I will touch upon two of them here, BrickSeek.com and PopFinder.com. These sites work very similarly to the proper Target app but have a bit more flexibility and features such as being able to render product UPC barcodes that you can scan in store at the kiosk to get more up-to-date inventory data. But again, more on in-store tools in a later step. I am not a fan of the vanilla search functions of these sites, so this is where having the specific barcode and DPCI data comes very much in handy. On BrickSeek, Choose the target inventory checker from their menu, and then you can search either the DPCI or the UPC, put in the zip code you want, and check your results. Personally, I find the target app to have much more accurate data than BrickSeek, but it's good to compare results between the two if you want to make your best guess. PopFinder, spelled P-O-P-F-I-N-D-R, is a newer entry into the inventory checker market and as you can probably surmise, was built to help collectors track down which stores had the newest and hottest Funko Pops. Luckily, for us non-trash collectors, it also allows for non-Funko product checking as well. I have found that Pop Finder tends to be refreshed at a higher rate than Brixie, but that's not something I can confirm with any clarity. PopFinder's interface is a bit more modern than BrickSeek, and again, it's good to corroborate your data between these tools, and even more as they enter the digital playground. I am just presenting the tools of the trade, but for Target specifically, I find the app to give me all the data that I need. Step 9. Although Target does their best to offer the same customer experience at each of their locations, each store has their own management team and staff which operates at their own pace. Products do not move through each location in exactly the same way, so that is why you should check your stores often and at different times on the app. For instance, stores in your area may be set to not having received their inventory by the time they close, but in the morning before they open, the inventory status may have changed. And remember, the early bird gets the worm. If you wake up to see your store has suddenly gone green and has stock, your best bet is to be in line at the butt crack of dawn before work and be the first to storm the toy aisle. 
Yes, there is a certain amount of shame that comes with putting this much effort into grabbing a toy, but the spoils of war can be sweet. Shame. Shame. This next Shame. set of tactics is where the real fun Shame. begins. I say this because here is where you are most likely going to have to face the most unpredictable element of the process. Other human beings. You'll have to get creative with some of the final steps here, but I'll do my best to provide a solid guide. Ultimately, it's up to you and your comfort level to determine how to best interact with employees at the store. It's too late to turn back now, though. Your mission, soldier, is to seek and detoy. Step 10. Once you've identified a store that appears to have your item in stock and are ready to show up in person, don't expect to walk over to the toy aisle and see a stack of 20 exclusives just waiting for you to pluck one for your cart. Remember, these items are in the store but aren't officially set to launch yet. There are planograms and stock locations that probably aren't set up just yet, so it's most likely that the inventory is stowed away somewhere still in the shipper boxes or on a U-cart, ready for release date. It's good to check the toy aisle to be sure, but there's only about a 1 in 10 chance that early product will be on the store shelves. Now it's time to go to your Target app queued up to the product with the beautiful green in stock in this store at the ready. You have a few options of who to interact with now. Any nearby employee walking the floor, the electronics desk, which is typically near the toy section, or if you want to go straight to the big guns, the guest services desk. It's up to you to pick your victim, but in general, your interaction should go something like this. Hi, I was wondering if you had time to help me find a product that the Target app says is in stock at this store, but I couldn't find it on the shelf. What's the product? A Transformers toy. At this point, you can show them the screen of your phone, or tell them the full name, or even give them the DPCI if you want to cut to the chase. Really, all they need is the DPCI, but they should be able to look into their system, which has more data points than the public-facing app. They are able to see the quantity of the product on the store floor and what is in the back. This information is crucial, because in the case of a product arriving the day of and showing up in inventory, it may be in a limbo state, which means it's been checked in from the truck it arrived on, but not put in either its home, in the stock room, nor its place on the store floor. Now it really comes down to the level of effort your chosen staff member is willing to put into helping you complete the sale. Results may vary. Some will brush you off and say there's no way to find it, or are just unwilling to rummage around in the back to find it but most employees are rather helpful and don't mind finding these items for you. If someone at the electronics desk won't help, then you can always try someone at customer service. It just depends how hard you're willing to work to get what you want. If someone isn't willing to help you and you've exhausted all your options, it's simply best to move on to another store. Getting angry or trash talking people will get you nowhere. So please do all of us collectors a solid and don't be an asshole. So let's assume you found a boisterous, happy employee that was willing to help and lo and behold, you now have your cherished, hard to find exclusive transformer. But we're not out of the woods just yet. Step 11. Street date. Bah, the dreaded street date the bane of any collector's existence. Remember how this product wasn't supposed to be released until July 3rd? Well, depending on how this DPCI is coded into Target's system, it may be street dated. And if you scan it at checkout and it returns as street dated, well, you're out of luck, son. No matter how much you channel your inner Karen, they will not allow you to buy this product. The system cannot be overridden, even by managers. Sorry! As of this recording, the Seeker 2-pack is not street dated, but Target's system changes over every Sunday at the start of business, and that is when street dates are lifted and imposed. Step 12. If you somehow are one of the first to acquire an upcoming item, share the news, spread the wealth, get front paged, bathe in delicious internet fame for at least 90 minutes. Distribution of these products is haphazard at best, so even if you think you live in the middle of nowhere, you too have the potential to be the first to come across new items. Hopefully some of the tips I outlined in this guide will make it easier to achieve this if that is your goal. But remember, only one of us can be first. 
So that's pretty much it. I was able to snag my Thundercracker and Skywarp set today using a combination of the methods indicated above, and I definitely hit my set of setbacks, but in the end, I got what I was looking for. I cannot stress how important it is to be courteous, appreciative, and thankful for the help of a staff member that is willing to go above and beyond. Never forget to say thank you. Even if an inventory check turns out to be zero, chances are you aren't the only one looking for these items, so I recommend getting up early if it looks like all the stars have aligned. Also, remember I'm focusing on product that hits the store before the advertised release date, which happens often due to a variety of translog issues. Most of the steps above also can be applied to current product, older product, and finding which stores have clearance specific items. One benefit of the Target app is that officially released product on the shelf can usually be ordered for in-store pickup. This is great if you have multiple stores around you and you want to confirm that the items will be there when you arrive. You can even try calling ahead and asking if the product can be held at guest services for you, but be aware that each store has their own policies and terms for whether or not they will hold product. Having products on hold is different than using the in-store pickup system because no order is created via the app to reserve and pay for your product. I thought this would be a short lesson, but like usual, I was wrong. I guess I just like to talk a lot. I hope this was easy enough to follow, but if you have questions, feel free to email me at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and I'll try to clarify anything that was confusing. Hopefully this episode ends up helping a collector or two get the items they want without spending hours tirelessly hunting around town, only to end up with an empty gas tank and shattered dreams. And if you can't just make it happen, there's always eBay. Have a great week, and happy hunting, Collecticons! The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way! If I made this sound easy, uh, I did this wrong. You don't even want to know how many stores I had to go to before I got this to work today. Woo! You are either lying or you're stupid!